Hi, I'm Kate Bonner for the Watercolor Diaries on KVTV Online. Thanks for joining. Today on Florida in Focus, we'll be looking at one of the oldest inhabitants of the state's coastline, sea turtles. Down here, they're called Florida's living fossils, and the excitement, debate, drama, and tragedy that surrounds their nesting season, it could fill libraries of poetry, film, plays, and novels. Millions of sea turtles once roamed the Earth's oceans, now only a fraction remain. Females crawl ashore to lay their eggs in the sand, therefore all sea turtles begin their lives as tiny hatchlings on land. Officials estimate that Palm Beach and Broward counties alone had 12,500 sea turtle nests this season. Because these so-called ambassadors of the sea are such a big part of the culture down here in South Florida, my producer Rachel and I decided to hit the Gumbo Limbo Environmental Complex, located at Red Reef Park on the barrier island between the Atlantic Ocean and the Intercoastal Waterway. It's 7 a.m. and I'm at the Gumbo Limbo Nature Center in Boca Raton. From March through October, it's the city's site for the sea turtle research and conservation efforts. Biologists go out to the beach and study sea turtle nestings over a five-mile strip of focus beaches. Dr. Kurt Roshenko, a marine conservationist at Gumbo Limbo's Nature Center, was gracious enough to take Rachel and me on an early morning sea turtle hatchling hunt. The sun was just rising as we met Dr. Roshenko in front of his laboratory. We climbed aboard an ATV and lumbered down to the beach. As we rode up and down the beach identifying the hatchling nests, Dr. Roshenko explained to us how these scientists conduct research on the sea turtles age and genetics, make assessments of their mortality rates, and continually revise population estimates, trends, and habitat requirements. He had this to say about where the sea turtles fit into our oceanic systems and marine biodiversity as a whole. The sea turtles are really at the top of the, the apex of the food pyramid in the ocean. So watching these animals, I think, is a very critical thing. It, it not only protects animals, it protects humans as well. Interestingly enough, the sea turtles have survived 110 million years of evolution and geological change. But 100 years with modern man, they're perishing. As our oceans have been devastated by development and industry, so too have the turtles suffered. Right now we're seeing a decline in the loggerhead population, some 50% decline nationwide in the last eight years. And that's a serious dent in the worldwide population. These turtles may be hanging out on the beach, but they certainly don't have it easy. Between light pollution, people, and eroding beaches, these walking fossils have a lot to contend with, particularly how disoriented they become by the lights of the condominiums. Despite light ordinances and vigilance among various citizens groups, more than 270 sea turtles were killed this year alone on A1A. That's the highway that runs along the beach. I asked Dr. Roshenko about the efforts by some of the grassroots teams. I was curious, this is a very organized effort. Are there any grassroots efforts as well going on? That's an excellent question because really the bulk of our job is to educate the public. And now um, there's a, a, a couple called the White Clouds who are down in uh, Deerfield Beach in Broward County setting up a wonderful responder program to help the sea turtles there. Join us over the weekend for the second installment of our Florida's Living Fossil series as I accompany Richard and Susan Whitecloud for a night with the responders. These are folks who stay out on the beach all night waiting for the sea turtle nest to hatch so they can guide the little ones away from the Las Vegas-like glitz of the condos back into the water. Thanks for joining today. I'm Kate Bonner for the Watercolor Diaries on KBTV Online.